Last week, China announced it has lifted its ban on group tours to South Korea and a slew of other countries after more than six years of restrictions. Related industries, including tourism and retail companies, are busy here, preparing to welcome tourists. For more on this, our business correspondent Shin ha young joins me in the studio. Hi, ha young For to be back, Jung Min. Um, so, ha young China had restricted troop tour groups from traveling to South Korea since 2017. What has prompted Beijing to lift this restriction? Well, as you've said, after almost six and a half years, the Chinese government has um, given the green light for group tours to South Korea. And in fact, in an announcement made on Thursday, China's culture ministry lifted its ban on group tours to 78 countries, including the United States and Japan. And group tours to Korea were banned beginning in March 2017 in apparent retaliation against the deployment of the U.S.-made Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, or the THAAS system. And one expert I talked to said there are diplomatic and economic reasons behind and China's latest move. Let's take a listen. I think we have to focus on the recent replace, replacement of the Minister of, of Foreign Affairs of China um, to Wang Yi. So um, China's stance is changing um, from a hard um, diplomatic strategy to a soft diplomatic strategy, in my opinion. So because China's domestic problems are surging, especially in the economic um, growth um, area. China has to seek economic cooperation with um, neighboring countries. Regarding the timing, another expert I spoke with pointed out that China's decision came after U.S. President Biden ordered a ban on certain U.S. tech investments in China and ahead of the trilateral talks between South Korea, the U.S. and Japan scheduled for Friday. Right, so more than six years for South Korea and some like three years for other countries. And then how are related industries reacting to this decision? What are some economic benefits that we can all look forward to? Well, Jungmin, local businesses such as those in tourism, cosmetics, and even um, uh, duty-free shops have welcomed the move. And they're expecting a recovery in sales, which were hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic and a drop in the number of tourists from China. Now, let's take a listen to what people had to say. We are expecting sales to improve with more Chinese tourists. We are preparing a variety of joint promotions with tourism businesses and airlines to enhance the shopping convenience for Chinese tourists. We have overcome all the challenges, including the period during the COVID-19 pandemic. I hope it provides an opportunity, especially for small business owners, to resume their operations. Individual Chinese tourists have been able to travel to South Korea, but the big deal here about the tour groups is the how much they spent. And data from the Korea Tourism Organization shows the number of Chinese tourists, which surpassed 8 million in 2016, was reduced by nearly half in 2017 due to the deployment of the U.S. missile defense system. Then the COVID-19 pandemic caused the number to plunge even further. And even though there has been some increase in the first half of this year, it is still still at a very low level compared to the past. And with Beijing allowing group tours to resume, Seoul's travel deficit is one of the key areas that is expected to see a recovery. The country's travel balance during the first half of this year recorded a 4.65 billion U.S. dollar deficit, the biggest deficit for the same period since 2018. And there has been a travel deficit for 22 consecutive years up to 2022. And South Korea could reach its 23rd year in the red if this trend continues. So all eyes are now on the Chinese tour groups. And according to a report released by the Bank of Korea, it is estimated that for every increase of 1 million Chinese tourists, South Korea's economy would grow by 0.08 percentage points. And this is a significant figure when considering the BOK's economic growth outlook for this year, which is at 1.4%. Then can we expect Chinese, uh, the number of Chinese tourists and their spending recover to the level of six years ago? Well, to give you a straight answer, no. It would be difficult to see that much um, recovery immediately. In fact, an expert I spoke to mentioned the potential for an improvement in South Korea's travel deficit, but transitioning to a surplus remains uncertain as Chinese consumer behavior has changed since then. 
Japan is one of the preferred travel destinations for Chinese tourists. This is due to its proximity, strong preference for Japanese products, and the depreciation of the Japanese yen. As the cost of living in China is low, it is dealing with deflationary concerns, while South Korea is experiencing relatively high inflation. Therefore, for Chinese tourists, the perception of the cost of living in Korea is relatively higher. In response, the government and local authorities have taken swift action to attract Chinese tourists. The Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism plans to roll out, roll out various strategies, including launching a K-Tourism roadshow event in Shanghai, targeting Chinese holidays, including its Mid-Autumn Festival and National Day. And after allowing group tours in just one day on Friday, reservations were made for a total of 53 Chinese cruise ships to visit Jeju, meaning that more Chinese tourists are expected to visit South Korea from now on. All right, thanks for your reporting, Hayao. Always my pleasure.